So my students are like my family. We are like friends. Okay. So I met Aaron in 2006, 2006. So Aaron has been uh, doing over 17 years in the arts of energy, meditation, traditional healing across China, South Korea, Thailand, India, Nepal, Europe, Turtle Island, Canada, facilitating circles, courses, events in cancer care hospices, women's shelters, psychiatric hospital, uh, indigenous communities, temples, wellness centers. <laughs> so she's always uh, doing things for the native. She loves the land so much and she always, um, she have a heart running around and bless the land wherever she go. So I'm not gonna read the whole thing, uh, all, all of the knowledge she has, right? She's really a leader of people and she's run events and workshops for facilities, wellness centers, and et cetera, et cetera. You see, when you don't do Qigong, you talk faster, right? So once I talk, do Qigong after breathing in, breathe on. Ah. You can imagine, right? I've done Qigong 24 years and then I still talk so fast, right? <laughs> So you can imagine what kind of person I am uh, when I was young, you know, especially also gone through the problem about throwing up blood on the floor. And that's how I started my journey when I was 20, 20 years old. And now it's like, wow, getting to 40 years ago. So Erin is a trainer uh, for Qigong instructors and healers too. So if you love her, um, find her on Facebook. Uh, she's always uh, busy. She's always <laughs> no time. She always taking care of people. Always showing up. Time. So okay. Ani Boju Tanse Saki Segi Hagen Aaron Dixon Vishnakaz Atapa Miziwak Meti Kweindao Skeleton Lake Aki Kwe Donjaba. Thank you, Master Teresa, for your joy. I would say the speed of your voice is actually the joy and love that you have in your heart, and I could feel that in the relationship we have together when we come together and practice and sharing. So I'm very grateful. I just introduced myself in Anishinaabe Moen. Um, when we talk about life energy and the spirit of uh, where we are, it's really beautiful to understand where I'm here right now is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe people. Um, and many people travel through here today, but the original words that emanate from the land is Anishinaabe Moen. And I am I'm just learning. Uh, my family is an interweave of um, many nations, um, including, well, I belong to the Métis Nation of Ontario, but it, again, there's weaves within that. And uh, I guess right now at this time in our planet, we're especially with technology, we're really aware of all the interweaves of our knowledge traditions um, and the power and the strength of that and all of the knowledge and ways of relating as we relate to Qigong that are right here. And so I just want to lift up all of the ancestors of this land, all of the beings, all the spirits of this place that are always teaching us. And I remember, um, Master Teresa, we were trying to figure out a name for this segment and we were talking about uh, Qigong with Mother Earth. And I remember when we were going to visit Grandmaster Wu's uh, place, uh, home place in uh, Guangzhou around that area. And I believe it was his sister who showed us the all of the trees and all of the land and earth that they said he used to run through. And, he, and his first teacher around Qigong um, she would say came from the land, came from Mother Earth, came from all of our original teachings. And that was really beautiful to hear because we often today we receive blessings like like this water here. When when Master Teresa says, I have followers, I see her talking about the water, that we are following the same waters of chi in practice, that we are a part of that body of knowledge. And so when we practice there, I, I mentioned Grandmaster Wu because it's a time right now to also um, honor all of our ancestors, all of our teachers of Qigong and Tai Chi today as an international day of celebration, that we lift them up on one body of practice um, and give thanks to them. So I'm very grateful to be here. Today we call these waters Skeleton Lake, um, but it was actually made by a meteorite. And the waters here filled up before the glacier period. So they're very ancient and there's very many wisdom traditions that talk about 
the nature of the energy that happens when a lake is made by a meteorite. And we talk about our practice of Qigong and opening up um, natural law within our own vehicles, within our own bodies. How do we return to natural law unless we understand that that which rests inside of ourselves? And so I often feel so grateful for Qigong um, and time sitting in the land and being in the land and returning to the land because that's who we are. Yeah, I like to do to things understand. in a good way. So I wanted to start by honoring um, all of our oh, teachers. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Do you mind if I do a song? Um, you do okay. A well, when you were starting off um, asking people when they wake up in the morning, uh, who are they? You know, why am I here? Uh, what are all those gifts that I'm carrying? What am I doing? And um, those are fundamental life questions that we talk about in our life promotion work. <laughs> exactly. And so this here is actually the Anishinaabe Dream Drum. And it talks about how each one of us, uh, Zagoske John Rice, carries the teachings around this drum. And I belong to a group of uh, singers, the Bawajagewin Dreamtime Singers. And each of us carry a different drum. And within us is a different wheel, is a different dream that we're carrying. And so I just wanted to share this drum um, as well as I'll just do two rounds for the water to honor the uh, Nibi Wabo is honoring all of the waters of Akikwe, Mother Earth, and all of the waters inside our own bodies, our own vehicles as one body of water. So I'll just offer that song before we start. Nibi Wabo and I Ake Misque Wabo Wea Hea Hea Wea Hea Hea Nibi Wabo and I Okay, Miss Gray thanks for uh, letting me uh, offer that song to the water and offer those words to all of our ancestors and all of the spirits of this place. And uh, Master Teresa, I look to your guidance, but uh, when I was thinking about this morning and the time of the day, I understand um, it's also a time that the spleen is moving uh, quite a bit when we think about our meridians. And uh, we understand the spleen is related to a lot of thinking, a lot of worrying. It's related to Mother Earth, all of those elements. And we know at this time, many people in different ways, whether they're thinking about our life path through, or their loved ones, or their own health, their own financial viability. There's a lot of thinking happening. So it'd be a wonderful opportunity this morning. I, even though you can see the wat, the beautiful waters behind me, I'm standing in the land. And so I wanted to share this uh, window of earth with you so that we can ground ourselves and open up our spleens and nourish our spleens. And I welcome you to, if you have your own practice for the spleen or anything your body needs to take that time now. And I'll offer a few uh, movements. Uh, to open up the lower body, especially um, we always start a lot of chi practice with that deep, um, full, uh, I would say full body breathing. <laughs> so I'm going to offer a few movements and feel uh, free to follow and move as your body guides you. So just opening in here, you can tap if you want on the lung and the kidney, but that will help to open the lower gate. And if you want to add a small bounce with the knee, opening the ankles. I remember Master Teresa would always say we often don't pay attention to the lower half of the body um, and so it's really nice as we begin a beautiful full day of practice to ground down um, into Mother Earth to release the mind and open up that greater flow. I know there's some dance and some other movements as we move throughout the day. So being very mindful of how we open up the great vase of our practice. And you can continue whatever you need here if you just want to swing the arms. 
as we talk about creation, I, I know I offered this song, but I do. I always find it um, very powerful to begin with the sounding of the body. Um, and uh, Teresa guided us into feeling the chi and moving it. But I would like to offer just a cycle through the body of sound and then some full uh, deep breathing as we move forward um, into the practice. Teresa, is there anything else you feel we need this morning? Well, I think the, uh, we need more the nature energy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so grateful you actually hang around now so that we uh, can start our day in the water, right? I really love it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's important right now we talk about, especially uh, to honor you, Teresa, we talk about right now, um, there's some prophecies, naturally the stories of this land is that women, uh, a lot of women are rising because they give birth to that new life, to that change. And it's really powerful uh, today when we think about Tai Chi and Qigong, that you've actually stood um, in the life and the gifts that have been given to you to bring this forward. It's not easy uh, because it's such a classically, uh, we think about men leading that field. And so just thank you for um, your leadership there and because these what yeah. these life these life waters are where all of our teachings come from. Um, so Ellen, you have any message for the Instagram fan uh, we have, you know? I know oh. you Instagram a lot. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I was just mentioning, um, and sorry if, if people are still listening, but just uh, that our life waters here bring all of our original teachings. I was in uh, Karansama in Colombia earlier this year, and all of the women there talked about mind and consciousness and how all of our original teachings come from the water. And we think about our Qigong teachings and our teachings of how to be in practice together. The water is such a powerful teacher. So uh, we were just talking about how grateful it is to be in the land and with the waters this morning to start out. So, yeah, thank you, Master Teresa, for taking um, taking the the new life forward and all of the the essence and the the waters of Grandmaster Wu's teachings um, to all of us here. Um, so, we usually like to breathe in, uh, okay, and then we move the hand. So, so, so. Uh, Good idea. So we can be uh, doing rising the abdomen forward. The abdomen rises. We breathe in and we bring it in and then we breathe out. Breathe in, rising abdomen. And breathing out, bring the abdomen in. So we can slow down the breath. Breathe in, two, three, four. Breathe out, two, three, four, five. Okay. So breathe in or oh, breathe out. So it's really simple. Rising abdomen as you breathe in. in. And as you breathe out, just bring abdomen in. So digestion is the second most um important area of our life so we breathe the air into the lung air is energy and then after we eat then we have to digest the food so a lot of health problems is coming from eating wrong food so we really should be eating food not processed as much as you can so as we have this lockdown going on, isn't it nice that people are cooking more? <laughs> wow. uh, it is really important to eat well. So you mess up yourself from the nose, breathing in the wrong things, and then you eat the wrong thing in and that's the other thing. The next thing we are doing that mess up ourselves is taking in the wrong energy of other people, which don't actually belong to you. So, so there can be movement that we can be moving the hand, rising the hand. As Erin rises the hand, you can do it with breathing in. When she lowers the hand, then you can breathe out. Okay, that's what she's doing. So rising the hand, open the hand, closing the hand. Then you breathe out. Uh, 
there's many variations of this uh, practice. Uh, yeah. Well, we are trying to do a Qigong 101, really. So some of the people have never thought about Qigong, mm -hmm. what's that about, right? So we have the breath work. We bring the intention of the body back to feeling good. So all the movements we're doing, we think about taking care of our health. And then we also think about letting go. Every breath as we exhale, uh, one of the ways to do is to think about letting go things. Yeah. It's nice too, I'm standing here in the land and sometimes when we're standing in a room, we forget that we're still held by Mother Earth. Um, and yeah. so when we think when we think about letting go and we think about breathing, we are breathing from the center of the earth, you know, as our bodies. And it helps our mind to expand into its natural state and to relax. We often hold things in the upper cavities, um, just the nature of our society, but just allowing the body. And when we expand our arms, it teaches us to listen and to breathe with that full body, which we carry into every element and every aspect of our life when we talk about mindfulness. It becomes the stream of how we relate. So, so nice. Awesome. So what we can do is we can just uh, enjoy, uh, continue, um, enjoy the nature for a moment. It's not that we have to keep doing movements. It's just really enjoy being quietly doing nothing. Just enjoy, be grateful, appreciate. That's about it, really. I'm taking it right to the water. <laughs> huh? Uh, you're what? right at the water. Well, I wanted to take you right uh, to the waters here. Uh, because for me, when we practice Qigong, it's about the waters returning to shore. Uh, when we think about that, the, the art and the beauty of the practice of life um, and, the, and that uh, gift of life energy. So yes, right here is just where the water is meeting the shore. Um, and so I wanted to share that with you, that reflection. <laughs> the waters here are very, very clear. Um, skeleton Lake, we're gifted with clear waters. Um, it has a speci special designation. And when we think about the nature of Qigong practice as well, when we look out into nature, um, it helps us to allow everything to settle and to have clear waters, clear mind, clear emotion, clear energy, and it allows us to naturally co-evolve, revolve with Mother Earth and all of the life that we're talking about. Now we hear about a lot of different thinking but if we slow down and we connect into any type of practice, um, it allows us to expand out into our time, even in, a, in the midst of chaos. So the first thing we, uh, we know that, that we don't like how certain feelings affecting us, then we can go to just the breath, quiet down for a moment. And then we say, do I want to keep this feeling? Or do I want to feel different? The first thing is think about what you want to get out and done with, right, <laughs> Aaron? Yeah. yeah, it's so true. And to know that all of those things are natural, especially right now, because there's so much in our field that we might be picking up all of this emotion or a lot of worry. And just to, when we bring it into the light of our awareness, it doesn't hold us any longer. When we talk about mindfulness, we can understand it and we can let it go with the same love and awareness that we, as many people talk about as we hold a child, um, but that we honor what it is and the nature of its arising. And like Chi, we let it flow. So amazing. You know, to say what, Aaron saying is not something come easy. It's many years of understanding how life is about it. Really. Yeah, there's this beautiful, this, I remember when uh, 
I think Master Teresa, you're teaching me what seems like a simple move. And like you, you said, your practice has been going for in this time for how many years, but this little move here is always deepening this one move here and the nature of society. We want to know more, have more, but this one move can be deepened and deepened. And I remember the first time I did it, you were tapping on my arms and telling me, you know, where my stress was and how I was holding it, but just every moment allowing ourselves to relax more and to deepen more into our own being and into our own nature. And so this opening and bringing the chi back into what we call the lower dantian or just below the navel point is a beautiful move um, that reminds us to come back and return to ourselves into our clear waters. So yeah, I, I was thinking about when I do this, that I, the very first time you taught me, but every time is uh, different and deepening. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? So Aaron, do you, would you uh, want to share some of the um, experiences, how you help the, uh, maybe the native, how they um, struggling and then because of Qigong, they improve or the way, the way how, how you buy them, it's always nice to, to share, right? Yeah, I'm happy to share. And it's, it's so funny where we are today because we all look so different, but um, my family is indigenous, is, is native, it is Icelandic. Um, it is English. So someone might look at me and just think, oh, she is European, you know, or we might have a projection, but actually the dreams and the teachings I've had since a long, young person were more from my grandmother's side on my dad's side of the family. And that's just the nature of life that came through me, part of that dream drum that we talk about. So I've naturally been called into the work. Um, today we call it truth and reconciliation, but the, the bay we win, I'm learning to speak it as the rivers of truth is the waters of truth. And that truth that comes from the heart or the spirit knowledge like Qigong, it has the energy to lift us and transform us as uh, both on an interpersonal societal level. So um, I share that because the land here, as, as many people know, across Turtle Island was, was very much colonized. We say there was, um, and we can talk about truth with great love so it's not disturbing. Um, but it, because of the residential schools and the cultural genocide that was here, when we talk about being in the land, we can't really be here unless we lift up not only the light of what happened during that short period, but if you look beneath it, all of the original teachings that are very deeply related to Indigenous teachings, natural law, to the work that we're doing around Qigong. And I share that because um, I share the gifts that I carry uh, with Qigong and it is the gifts that all of the people carry within their nations. A lot of that knowledge that was taken away, that was cut off, it is naturally rising through them as their ancestors, as our ancestors continue to walk with us. So it, as uh, Master Teresa does so generously, it's about supporting that natural reawakening through each other. And so I'm very blessed to work with uh, many uh, different people from different nations, um, across Turtle Island, across Canada. And uh, I do so a lot of work around, uh, we say life promotion or suicide prevention. Um, and so because of the cultural genocide there, as we know, there's a high rate of suicide across many indigenous nations across the planet, including Canada. And so how do our life teachings and returning to mother earth and opening that greater vessel, um, it helps us in so many ways. We're doing trauma informed approaches and Qigong is an incredible healer and gift that works uh, on a multi-dimensional level without going too deeply into the mind and thinking and grasping. It can help lift out uh, what we don't need to carry. So I've shared it before going into the sweat lodge. We've done Qigong and it's helped as we moved into the lodge for us to be more open with the young women or in circles with young people um, in the mornings after our songs uh, because it's part of uh, that whole body listening as we were doing moving from the chest breathing into the abdomen when we're deeply in the earth and rooted. So yes, uh, Teresa, I'm so grateful to be able to share some of the Qigong. And then sometimes when I get to hear the language of the land here, or I get to hear um, some of the songs, I understand Qigong better. You know, it starts to move through each other because it's the traditional knowledge. So it's, uh, it's a great time. As they say, there's so many prophecy stories that create a beautiful time tapestry and one of them is that at this time from all directions we will have all of our original knowledge all of our wisdom traditions returning to create that great mandala of life that will carry us through this time 
And so I'm grateful to share this knowledge um, with uh, with um, all of the communities across yeah. Turtle Island. Thanks, Master Teresa. Uh, yeah, well, well, I, I thank you too. Um, uh, 2006 is when I first uh, <laughs> sent the torch for my teacher. And then uh, all of a sudden I, I just don't even know how to be <laughs> anyone really. Just He just disappeared and then just, what should I do, right? And then I, uh, okay. So and then at the time, uh, actually that, that's around the time Aaron uh, uh, wanted to learn Qigong and came to me and wanted to be my student. I said, somebody wanted to be my student. <laughs> Something, maybe <laughs> that's, not, that's how it feels, right, right? Oh my God, people do want to learn from me. <laughs> maybe I have something to teach, right? So we went to China uh, together uh, a few months later. So I brought uh, all the beautiful work my teachers done to, to Canadian, North American uh, people back to his family, right? And what my teacher showed me is um, the beautiful thing is he actually did not really uh, live long. He just really disappeared in his 70s. And then the message is really, um, hey, don't think you are very strong. <laughs> you, you can disappear anytime. Also, although he lived to the last breath, uh, never been in the hospital. Uh, you know, it's not that he's in hospice or anything. He was just at home, right? To beautifully understand that people can just really, it's almost like close their eyes and leave, right? That's a magical part of Qigong that what shows me. Wow, you can be just at peace like that. Isn't that awesome? And the next thing is, um, I always think that um, my teacher has, has never really uh, taken care of himself enough. He always giving, teaching, healing people nonstop the whole day. And I am, I'm inspired to have more healers because of that. You just need to have lots of people healing people. And then uh, wow. when I am in my later years, I just crowded with all my students, all can send me energy. <laughs> Isn't that cute eh? idea? No, that's, I think you're evolving the Hanyang Gong. <laughs> wow, you know, you know, here's this nice uh, to break that legend. And then the woman can be as powerful as the man, a uh, Qigong teacher. And then, you know, I'm so small, right? You know, I'm just really small. I'm a tiny, a tiny body is small. But do a lot of <laughs> work, right? I just heal people remotely uh, on the telephone. I know people from a distance. I think about them. I, uh, I know what's going on in their life. So I don't want to think too much sometimes. The beautiful yeah. part with Aaron is Aaron show me... Um, uh, there, are, there are people who don't look Chinese too. They, they, they really like to do Qigong too. <laughs> and there's many people like Aaron around. <laughs> well, we need Qigong right now. Um, people say we need all of our original teachings because it's bringing out the spirit of who we are and why we're here. And that's is what that is truly what will carry us through this time um, holistically. Yeah. So it's pretty awesome uh, yeah. that you. Well, the, the beautiful journey is when I first started in 2006, uh, really as a teacher. And before that, I'm always assisting my teacher to run the school, which is my school, really. And then from then on to pick up the work to do. And, and the thing is to figure out how can a woman survive in this man's world of Qigong master, basically mm -hmm. all guys, really? And how do yeah. I, what do I do? Yeah, it's an it's an interesting transition because that way of relating shows up sometimes in hidden, we say hidden in plain sight and some of that old thinking. And so I did, we just had an Indigenous Women and in, um, in Leaders think tank in December and all of these beautiful women that are creating change from new economic systems to all sorts that are spiritually led. And we hear it all the time, even at this time of COVID-19 of the female leaders. We're grateful for however people relate. And, yeah. and we're grateful for the men, but we also know that it's a time to get us through that we are so grateful that all the women are rising collectively like yourself, uh, Master yeah. Teresa. So I we, wouldn't be able to be here the way I am today without your yeah. support. So we support each other. So yeah, I'm, I'm speaking this way is to inspire other women uh, to become somebody. So I was really terrible before. 
uh, help wise, <laughs> emotional wise, a single mother, no money, no anything, to to become a teacher internationally and uh, in the mastery of healing people anytime, anywhere. It's really a transformation journey. So it's not that I know any Qigong before. I actually know nothing. So we like to inspire more people to follow us uh, to become the leaders and healers of others. Uh, the people really need help. That's why we're doing these things, right? Oh. Okay, awesome. Okay. So, so thank you very much. Uh, just quiet down for a minute. Uh, thank you. And the next thing is appreciate ourselves, right? Appreciate and be proud of yourself. So it's not about boasting yourself, really. It's about you, you have done special things in your life. And it is a lot of giving and kindness that myself, my students, my followers have been giving to the world, to the people around the life. Honor ourselves, really, and be grateful for what a lovely person we are. And the thing, the next thing I would say, um, I am worthy. And then manifest the life you want in the chi. Okay, so let you go, uh, Aaron. Thank yes. you for coming on board. Yes, have a beautiful day. And uh, thank you for inviting me to share the beauty and the teachings together. Take care. Okay, so... Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, people are thanking you, uh, Tina thanking you, and uh, Nina and other people thanking you, and they like you uh, and everything. So really beautiful. <laughs> and more, more thank you, people, to uh, thanking you, Frank, etc. <laughs> so awesome. So thank you, Aaron. Thank you.